In this video, we'll be looking at Chapter 8, Section K on the normal distribution. Now let's imagine for a moment that we've harvested apples from a single apple tree and that we've carefully measured their weights. We can represent those weights using a dot plot. And in the center of the dot plot, we have the mean weight of the apples, or the average weight. And it's not hard to imagine that a lot of the apples will weigh in right at that average. And we'll have quite a few apples, but slightly less, that are just greater than the weight, the mean weight. And we'll have about the same number of apples that are just less than the mean weight. And as we go farther and out, farther out, we get fewer and fewer apples that are significantly greater in weight than the mean, and we have fewer and fewer apples that are significantly less in weight than the mean. And if we fit a distribution curve to this dot plot, we see that it forms a nice bell-shaped curve. And these bell-shaped curves represent the normal distribution. And we see normal distributions both in nature and in man-made systems all the time. In other words, it's really common to see normal distributions when we're measuring, say, the height of 16-year-old boys or the length of adult sharks. Or if we're looking at the scores of tests from a significantly big enough population, we should get these, these nice bell-shaped curves. And if we don't, we see that the data is skewed. Let's consider another normal distribution. Machines in a manufacturing process are set to produce nails at 50 millimeter lengths. But due to some random variations, if we measure closely, we, we see that nails could be slightly above or below that average. So we could get 49.7 uh, millimeter nails. We could get 50.2 millimeter nails. And we're going to have more nails that are closer to 50 and less nails that are farther away. If we have enough data, we could calculate the standard deviation. And let's say that that's 0 0.3 millimeters. Now this, these measurements will also form a normal distribution that will look something like this. And we know the peak occurs at the mean which is 50, and we can see over here that this value is at about 50.3, which is one standard deviation to the right of the mean, and we can go one standard deviation to the left of the mean, which is 49.7. Now this is significant because statisticians have found that for almost all normal distributions that 68% of the population falls between one standard deviation or within one standard deviation of the mean. Right, so we can see from the graph that I've gone one standard deviation to the left and one standard deviation to the right and this, this is really 68% of my data. Again, this is true for almost all normal distributions. If I go out another standard deviation, I'll be at 50.6 on the right, and I'll be at 49 Point 0.4 on the left. So now I'm showing data that's within two standard deviations of the mean. And again, statisticians have found that 95% of all data in a normal distribution is within two standard deviations 
of the mean. And we can go out one more. We can go out three standard deviations on both sides. And statistic statisticians have found that 99.7%, or effectively almost all of the data in a normal distribution curve is within three standard deviations of the mean. So if we know the mean and we know the standard deviation and we can approximate a data set as being an, having a normal distribution, we can approximate um, where 99.7% of the data will fall, where 95% of the data will fall, and where 68% of the data will fall. So let's take a look at a more generalized version of this graph or plot for normal distribution. So again, here we have our normal distribution, our nice bell-shaped curve. We have the mean in the center. To the right, I have the mean plus one standard deviation. And to the left, I have the mean minus one standard deviation. And we can see that the, the numbers are a little bit more precise here, but there's roughly 68% of the data falls within a one standard deviation of the mean. And I can go farther out to two standard deviations and three standard deviations. So let's take a look at an example problem. Let's say we have a sample of 200 cans of peaches that were taken from a warehouse, and the contents of each can were measured for net weight. And we see that the sample mean was 486 grams with a standard deviation of 6.2 grams. Now we're asked the question, what proportion of the cans would lie within one standard deviation of the mean and within three standard deviations of the mean? Well, using the general normal distribution curve from the previous slide, we can see, we can fill in the numbers here uh, for x and standard deviations, or oh, sorry, x bar and standard deviation. So we know the sample mean was 486, and we know that the standard deviation was 6.2. So just to the right, I will have 492.2 grams, and just to the left, I will have 400 and 79.8 grams. So that will help us answer the first question. We can see that approximately 68% of the cans should lie within one standard deviation of the mean, which if we put that into numbers is 486 plus or minus 6.2 grams or between 479.8 and 492.2 grams. Now the second question is very similar. I can find the mean plus three standard deviations, which is 504.6. And I can find the mean minus three standard deviations, which is 467.4. And effectively, all of the cans should be between these two numbers. And if we want to be slightly more precise, it's about 99.7% of the cans should lie between 486 plus or minus 18.6 grams, which is three standard deviations, or between 467.4 and 504.6 grams.